Now we continue with Henry Thomas Hamblin's Dynamic Thought. We're still in Chapter 1. We ended with, first of all, memorize these words. Keep repeating them over until they sink deeply into your memory and their meaning finds a place in your consciousness. If you can get a few moments to yourself during the day, practice making the affirmation. The right way is as follows. Go into a quiet place. Whether you sit, stand, or lie down is immaterial. Close your eyes and say the words over very earnestly. Now, strive to realize all that they mean and address the words to your inner mind. It is your submerged mind that you are influencing. So address the affirmation very earnestly to it. Do this for several minutes and finish by making the affirmation into space. Hurl it out as a message to the universe. And by so doing, you will come into harmony with innumerable, invisible forces who will help and strengthen you. Do not make the affirmation while in a state of strain or nervous tension. Relax yourself, take a deep breath, and as you exhale, let your muscles go limp. Smooth out your nerves until your whole body is in a peaceful, easy state. Concentrate your thoughts on what you are doing. If they wander, bring them back and begin again. The more you concentrate, the better will be the result. The most important, in fact, the time above all times for making the affirmation is just as you are falling to sleep. There was a great psychological reason for this. If you can fall asleep while making the affirmation or while visualizing it, so much the better. Therefore, take no food or stimulants. It's better to avoid the latter altogether just before retiring. The reason cannot be given here because it would take too long, but it is an important one. In the very early morning, immediately on waking, is the next best time. Both times should be made use of, and on no account be missed. But of the two, the one just before sleep is by far the more important. The influence of these two affirmations will be felt during the day. It will have an effect on your mental outlook and upon the way in which you de deal with the problems of your day's work. But this influence can be intensified and buttressed, as it were, by retiring into yourself at intervals during the day and mentally repeating the affirmation. This will give you a sense of power and confidence and hope, such as you have never experienced before. This is not imagination. It is your hitherto unsuspected interior powers being roused into activity. When you have finished making the affirmation, again, close your eyes and make a mental picture of yourself in the manner already taught. Endeavor to see yourself a radiant being with the old life and its murkiness and imperfections left far behind you. Picture yourself pressing forward to higher and better things, meeting difficulties. It is true, but overcoming them trampling old habits, weaknesses, and imperfections under your feet. Try and realize that you have the power to raise yourself above the ordinary things of life.
excuse me. That you can breathe a rarer and purer atmosphere. Picture yourself as a new being, happier, healthier, brighter, and more radiant than ever. You have been even at your most sublime moments. This will not be easy. It requires concentration and it requires perseverance. You will find it difficult to see yourself as you wish to see yourself. Or if you find it not easy to see yourself clearly at all. You will find it difficult to keep your mind concentrated on the making of the image. There's only one thing to do. And that's to keep on trying. Thus in the first lesson do you come face to face with a battle royal. With most students this visualizing is a great difficulty. But no matter how difficult it may be, it has to be overcome. If you fail to overcome this difficulty, then you fail in this course of lessons. If you fail to overcome now, you will fail in the larger things of life. The best way to overcome a difficulty is by getting interested in it. And when you have developed interest, enthusiasm is aroused. And after that, Concentration becomes comparatively easy, and this commands success. Therefore, get interested in this problem of visualizing. Remember that all men of great achievement have had this power greatly developed. Therefore, if you wish to be great and successful, you must first develop the same faculty. There's never been a great act or achievement in the world's history that was not first visualized in this manner. Everything is first created in the unseen before it is manifested in the seen. When you, by dint of practice, can visualize clearly and distinctly, you will have developed creative power. Not figuratively. Literally so. Whatever you create in your mental world by means of visualizing will in time be manifested in the outer physical world. The outer world of matter is subservient to the inner world of mind. This is a great occult truth which has been held, withheld, excuse me, withheld from ordinary people and has been until recently the closely guarded secret of certain secret orders. When they have reached a certain stage of their development, the knowledge will come to them by some channel or other. And in the meantime, it does more harm than good to try to impart occult knowledge to those who are not interested, who are ready to receive it. Now, I know, I hope enough has been said to arouse your interest in and enthusiasm for visualizing. The more clearly you can visualize, the more clean cut will be the results in your daily life. This creative power can be so highly developed that a sick man can make himself well. A poor man can change his circumstances from poverty to prosperity. Prosperity, excuse me. And a miserable and despondent pessimist can change himself into a cheery optimist. By visualizing and by denials and affirmations, which will be explained later, and by meditation and by exercise of hope and faith, the life, character, and circumstances can be transformed. The results are so extraordinary. That is very difficult to get people to believe them. But they are nonetheless real. Therefore, practice your affirmations and persevere with your visualizing. They will lead to results of which you can at present form but a faint conception. 
To obtain the best results from this course, it's necessary to set apart a special time every day for meditation and concentration. The reason man is so weak and unhappy is because he lives the whole of his life in the objective, all of his time in the objective life. The shallow material life of the senses and it neglects the deeper, grander, and transcendental life of the inner mind. Inner mind. It is the inner life that gives us power and peace and satisfaction. The outer material life of the infinite mind of the senses only bring worry and care. The inner life of the deeper mind brings strength, wisdom, understanding, and ability to accomplish and achieve. It's a proved scientific fact that you grow into the likeness of that upon which you meditate. If you meditate upon evil, then evil will come into your life. If you meditate upon revenge, your life will be turned into an infernal of trouble. On the other hand, if you meditate upon happiness and other higher mental states, then happiness, excuse me, then happiness will be yours. And if you let your thoughts dwell upon peace, then peace of mind will result. All these states and many others are within you. And they can be called forth by meditation. You can call forth either good or evil, success or failure, strength or weakness, happiness or woe. Everything is in your own hands. Meditation number one. We'll be in the next video. Thank you for still listening to this video. Dynamic Thought, Henry Thomas Hamlin. See you in the next one. I'm Turk Strawman. This is the Ryan Kiramatron.